Typically, we hear climate change, we think about icebergs and these ice sheets. It's this very far away problem, right? We have some psychological distance to it. And I sort of was in the same boat, so to speak, until I went to Greenland and Alaska and realized that for some people, this is their life, right? The, the people there depend on the fjords for their life, both culturally and for food. My name is Dave Sutherland. I'm an oceanographer at the University of Oregon in the Department of Earth Sciences. And I study places where fresh water meets the ocean because these are the really interesting places that humans live around and, importantly, that climate change is affecting. In 2008, I went to uh, Tasilik in the southeast part of Greenland for the first time, which is a town on Sermlik Fjord, and actually tried to collect you know, the first water measurements. And so we get on this really small boat, and we were like, whoa, this is our research vessel? Pack all of our instruments on. And so we went out of the harbor, around, and you sort of have to navigate through these rocks. And you come around the corner, and then it just sort of hits you. There's just these mountains of ice all around you. And we're navigating in our tiny 20-foot boat around these icebergs, just looking up in awe. It, it just puts things in scale and how much ice is coming off these ice sheets. When we talk about climate change, one of the really big factors is how much sunlight Earth reflects back up into space. We say it's about 70, 71 percent ocean. But then, you know, what I don't think people think about very much is a lot of the land and the ocean is covered in ice. And so that means that the ice, the cryosphere is what we call it, is really important to understanding Earth's climate because it reflects the sunlight so much more than these other types of land or ocean. And so as we move forward with climate change and we reduce the footprint of the cryosphere on Earth, lose that ice reflected ability, we're gonna absorb more heat and that just feeds back on itself. But those glaciers are actually putting fresh water into the oceans two ways. So one way they do it is just by melting. It's like pouring water into the oceans. If you do enough of that, you're gonna raise the global sea level. The other way they put fresh water into the oceans is via icebergs. It's like plopping an ice cube into your drink. You can see the level of your drink go up, but as that iceberg, in this case your ice cube, melts in your drink, the level doesn't change anymore. And it's a totally natural phenomenon. But what's happening recently is that more ice is being lost than what's being replenished. The physics of it is really simple. We can actually compare it to a bank account. The snow is like the money you're putting in. If you build up enough of that snow, it actually has enough pressure and weight that it pushes down and compresses and turns into ice. If the snow you put in every year doesn't keep up with the amount that you're spending, your bank account is going to shrink. And that's what's happening right now to the Greenland ice sheet. And that's just not sustainable. So here's an experiment you can try at home. Take two cups of water, take some salt, put salt in one of those cups, make your own ocean, right? So now you've got an ocean in a cup and you've got your fresh water and then put ice in both those cups. Before they start melting, make a prediction. Try to decide which of these cups is the ice gonna melt faster. Go off and do something else for 10 or 15 minutes. Come back and you should see right away which of the cups has the ice melted faster in. In the saltwater cup, when you add fresh water via the melting ice, that fresh water is actually less dense than the salt water. You can imagine like if you put oil on top of water, right? The oil is less dense than the water and it floats on top. And then the ocean, that's exactly what fresh water does. So as it melts, you basically create this, this little surface freshwater cap that gets really cold and it actually protects that ice from melting even further. Whereas in the freshwater cup, as you melt that ice, it becomes cold and cold water is more more dense than warmer water. And so it actually sinks to the bottom and you actually create this really cool convective current. And if you want to visualize that current, you can actually get food coloring and put a little bit of dye in each cup. And you'll see that the dye in the freshwater cup actually sinks to the bottom and, and sort of starts moving around in a, in a vertical fashion. Whereas in the saltwater cup, it just sits in that surface layer and this illustrates a few really important points about the real world ocean. One is that the ocean has density structure. You don't just have fresh water on top of salt water, but it's got many, many layers. You kind of think of it as this layer cake of density of different water masses. And that gives us a hint as to how the ocean circulates water, heat, nutrients, and, and organisms. If that didn't happen, then the tropics would be warming up all the time and the polar regions would be just getting colder all the time. There's this effect called polar amplification. The polar regions are warming much faster than anywhere else on the world. And everywhere around the world, the temperature is increasing, right? And that's not a surprise. Everywhere except around the Greenland ice sheet, actually. And that's a direct effect of the more ice that's coming off the Greenland ice sheet. 
Why they're interesting to me is because oceanographers haven't really studied them because they are ice. And glaciologists don't study the icebergs because they, they're in the ocean now and they're far away from the glacier. So they're these really monstrous icebergs that kind of create their own ecosystems and, and no one was really studying them for the past 10, 20 years. And so I think it was this gap in the knowledge of how they're impacting the world's oceans, how they're impacting the climate, how they're impacting the marine organisms and ecosystems that they travel through. And so all of those are really active areas of, of research that are all really important.